Hello everyone and welcome to Trek's new product introduction. I'm John Riley, the Director of Mountain Bike Product Development, and I'm here today to introduce to you a very exciting new project from Trek. Introducing the Fuel EXE. It's a new breed of mountain bike. It removes the divide between EMTB and traditional bikes. It shares more in common with the Fuel EX than our existing high-powered EMTB lineup. Now riders could be choosing between a Fuel EX or a Fuel EXE. It's different because it's small, lighter, quiet, and more natural than other e-bikes. It has the best technology hidden inside, so you can't even see that's present. It's everything we love about traditional bikes with a refined assist that doesn't make you feel like you're riding an e-bike. Now, what is this market we're talking about? We really have two different types of e-bikes on the market today. We have the high-powered segment. That's your 85, 90 Newton meters of torque, bigger, bigger batteries. They are heavy, but it doesn't matter because they supply ample range and power. These bikes can take you further, higher, faster, and they've been game changers over the years. On the other side, we have the light assist. These are these lightweight sub 50 Newton meters of torque bikes that have smaller batteries with limited range, but they ride more like a traditional bike due to their light weight, but they're very underpowered. The Fuel EXE slots somewhere between the two in the best of ways. It's as light as any EMTB on the market. But the big difference here is the mid power that it gives you with real assist without the feel of being either overwhelming or underwhelming. And there are so many other features we'll get into. This bike has some amazing new things. But the most important thing is, let's talk about who this bike is for. And to do that, I want to bring in the senior industrial designer, Ben Fullerton, who is responsible for the looks and the ride characteristics of this bike and has done a lot of things to research and define the customer for this. All right, I'm here with Ben, and Ben is the senior industrial designer that worked on this project. I mean, from a aesthetic standpoint, it's killer. I mean, Ben, you did an amazing job, looks really good. Uh, but besides the industrial design, um, you've also worked really closely on defining the customer for this bike. So Ben, who's the customer for this bike? So, you know, you and I, the rest of the mountain bike team are out there riding with mountain bikers, e-mountain bikers, everyone. We're out there riding the full power bikes with riders. It's an awesome ride, um, but a lot of the times we're riding with them and there's a lot of people not using that full power. We're finishing our rides with half of the battery and it was a fun ride, but there's coming back from the EX itself, you can just feel that difference of the heavy bike, a little bit too much power kind of blasting out of corners, doesn't handle the same and you really have to change your riding style. So there's some negative sides to that awesome power and the goal with this bike is to provide a lot of that sensation of the e-bike, but not compromise with all of the trade-offs. So you can get on it and ride it just like your Fuel EX, like you normally would. And that's the other goal is getting those kind of traditional mountain bike riders that have maybe tested an e-mountain bike and they got off it and they were like, the thing's too heavy, it's too powerful. I still wanna get my ride in, build some fitness, you know, ride with a mixed group of people. Um, but then hopefully when they get on this bike and ride it, it kind of clicks and they realize that I don't have to change my riding style anymore, how I ride, where I ride, and um, just get a lot of those same awesome feelings of both of those worlds. Weight does matter. A lighter bike is awesome and makes for the nimbility that we really like in that style of bike. It's amazing. But, you know, everything that we've tried up to this point was really just lacking the juice, right? To make it a really fun experience and still have that true like EMTB experience with some yeah. power when you want it and have the lightweight, and that's what we really wanted with this. We wanted that newer segment somewhere in between that had the power, but kept the weight light and made it for a great experience. Yeah, walking those middle of the line products is hard because you want to do just enough on this side, but then not overdo it and overshoot it and just do more. So the e-system is about balance, the whole bike platform is all about balance and just finding the right amounts. All right, Ben, we've been talking about the customer, we've been talking about this awesome bike, but you know, let's jump into it. Let's talk about the numbers. What are the numbers on this bike? The frame platform itself is a great do-it-all kind of trail bike, 150 millimeter fork and 140 millimeter rear. And probably longer, slacker. Yep, all updated geometry, we'll get into that later. Now the drive unit itself, what makes it an e-bike, the number there is 50 Newton meters of torque. And that's kind of that balance as we were doing test riding to figure out what's just that right amount, just like with the rest of the bike. The battery, is a 360 watt hour into battery that's bolted in. Those two combine, get you about two to five hours of riding. And that's, you know, real single track riding. If that's not 
long enough, you can throw on the range extender into the water bottle cage, plug that in, that's 160 watt hours, and that gets you another hour or two of riding. That's nice, you can just carry it in your backpack, it's super light, easy to use. Now the, the in-tube battery and the motor itself weigh 3,900 grams total altogether. That gives us a bike weight that's at least 10 pounds lighter than the comparable full power bike. And as you and I were riding the bikes out on the trails, that's a weight that you can really, really feel. Absolutely. And then the other thing that's really important there that hasn't really been talked about, but a really important number is the sound. So we've done a lot of different testing we're gonna talk about later, but tonality units came up as a really important number. And this motor system is coming in just over 0.1 tonality units. Not gonna dive into a whole lot now, but to me, that was one of the biggest things when riding out there that affects the ride just as much as weight. A couple keys there are weight, obviously, right? And that's yep. a big number, right? That's a yeah. big chunk to, to take out of the bike. But then, you know, the experience, right? And you're hinting about it. We're gonna talk about it more because it's a key part of this bike, but a quiet bike is a great experience and is a fast bike. It just feels faster, funner out on the trail. And it's amazing how quiet this bike is because usually when you get to these 50 Newton meter type motors and these ranges that we're talking about, the sacrifice is usually they can be pretty loud. Yeah. The systems can be, but this one's amazingly quiet. Yeah, you don't really realize it. When you're on that full power bike, all the other systems out there, you're riding it and it's kind of that trade-off that yeah, it's loud, but all the systems are loud, but it's so worth it because wait till you feel this and it's great. And then once that sound goes away, it's just kind of a, a serene riding experience. You can hear your tires on the dirt. You can hear your buddies talking back and forth like, hey, let's do another lap. Let's go down over here. And it's one of those things that once you ride that quiet of a bike, it's hard to go back. It's like with a clutch derailleur, you're hearing chain slap and the, the chain's not that loud and all of a sudden it goes away and then I'll, it's totally it quiet. It just makes a big difference, yeah. right? And we're gonna talk more about that because it really is a key feature of this new bike. All right, we've been talking about this amazing new EXE and we've been talking about the rider and the numbers associated with it. But quite honestly, for this vision to become reality, we had to find a great partner that we could work with to develop this bike that we were dreaming of. And with that, we came up with a vendor called TQ. And to introduce more about TQ, I want to bring on Ted Alsop. Ted Alsop is the head engineer for this project, and he's the one that brought our frame technology and their motor technology together. So Ted, who's TQ? Uh, TQ is a, a German technology company. Uh, they're based in Munich. They're involved in a lot of industries. So they do robotics, uh, avionics, automation, embedded systems. Um, they also know how to have fun. They make a skateboard that goes 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, so they seemed like kind of the, the perfect package. So everything that we need, look for in a, a partner on a project like this. And they're also avid mountain bikers, right? That was kind of a, a key feature that we really liked about the brand and the company. Uh, we got together with them early on in Moab, had a great experience riding bikes with them. But more importantly, we learned a lot too, right, in Moab? Yeah, that was a really important test. We wanted to bring them to the U.S. to show them uh, the style of riding we wanted the bike to excel on. Um, and we also wanted to really kind of see where they were as a company. And they're passionate e-bikers. They're really into the vision of, of this category, really, this, this mid-power, light electric bike. And, you know, the key to TQ2 is that they had a patented technology that would allow kind of this blend of small packaged motor, quiet, um, and really working well with what we wanted out of the system. And tell us about that, because I think that's probably the key here to why TQ is the right partner. Yeah, that's, that's really what caught our attention first, was their harmonic pin ring technology, um, which is a harmonic drive. It, it does some pretty cool stuff. Um, you can get a really big gear reduction with only one step. So it's a smaller, simpler, more torque-dense motor. Um, and that's really the foundation to, to the EXE. All right, so we've been talking about you know, TQ and their technology that allows us to get to a really small packaging for this, for this motor. I mean, it's incredibly small, right? Yeah, it's tiny. Um, it, it fits behind the chain ring. Um, its size allows uh, me as an engineer to lower the battery, to lower the center of gravity. It makes Ben's job easier as a designer. Yeah, um, we can the, put anything anywhere, yeah. really. The down tube is only it's 39% smaller than a rail, so it's just a little bit larger than like a fuel EX's down tube. It's amazing, actually, when you look at the bike, how much it looks like a traditional bike because of the down tube and the fact that the motor's behind the chain ring. It's crazy. I mean, a bike just looks like a regular bike, but you've got a lot of power with that new motor, and that's what the key is with the balance of what we want to get with this bike. 
you can lift it like a normal bike too, you know, like lifting on a bike rack onto a bike stand. Right. So the whole bike, it, it is heavier, not that much heavier considering what you're getting out of it. Right. And the, the system add is only 3.9 kilograms. So that's 8.6 pounds. Just add that and you have a full 300 watts, five, 50 newton meters. That's very and, light. And that's with a pretty burly build too. It's not skinny tires like they're full enduro casing tires, good suspension, piggyback shocks on all of them. Right, so. you know, full-size rotors, all the things that e-bikers expect, you know, because you're pushing a bike, the chassis is a little heavier than a normal bike, so you want the burlier tires, you want the bigger rotors, you want the bigger fork and the better suspension in the rear. I mean, all that is still there. It's, it rides just like you'd expect it to. No, no shortcuts on getting there. What happens, we get to a 40-pound bike which is pretty amazing with that kind of build that you can go out and get a bike at that weight and that performance. Uh, it's just an incredible riding experience. Yeah, it's not doing the, the lightweight advertised weight and then you start adding parts to it, beefier tires, bigger shock, bigger fork to make it the bike that you want. It's already there out of the box. All right, another key feature with TQ is how quiet it is, right? Yeah. That all goes back to kind of the, the, the architecture of the motor, uh, the magic of TQ's harmonic pin ring. There's only two moving parts in the motor. Uh, fewer moving parts means fewer frequencies emitted from the motor, which lowers that tonality number. Uh, tonality is a measure of kind of the annoyance of sounds, right? Like higher frequencies, they can kind of fatigue you more. Uh, tonality is a way of measuring that. And because of that harmonic pin ring, because of how much more gear mesh there is in the motor than a traditional geared e-bike motor, uh, it's emitting way fewer frequencies and way lower frequencies. Well, there's that tonality word again, and we've touched on it a few different times here, but I think now we should bring on our expert of tonality, which is Mr. Cam McCall. Cam, what's this all about? Its simplicity makes it quieter, lighter, and smaller, which are all great things for e-bikes. Now let's take this thing to the lab to learn more about what we're hearing. Acoustics is a surprisingly complex science with several metrics that measure human perception of sound. We use logarithmic scales for loudness like decibels and hearing sensitivity models like sones. Then for sound quality metrics, also called psychoacoustic metrics, we use tonality to understand how we perceive sound. When you look at just decibels, you see that the Fuel EXE is quieter than a typical electric mountain bike. However, tonality, which measures sound quality, is most useful for what you experience on the trail. Tonality discerns good sounds from bad sounds. Let's listen to that high-powered, big battery e-mountain bike in the lab. We're gonna measure it in tonality units and see it plotted out on an acoustical color map where we can see the offending noises in red. Now, here's a popular light assist electric mountain bike. And finally, the Fuel EXE. You can see on the tonality graph that the Fuel EXE is closer to a traditional unassisted bike than the next quietest electric bike we tested. The Fuel EXE is just above the barely perceivable threshold at 0.1 tonality units. Meanwhile, other electric mountain bikes we tested are at or above 0.4 tonality units. The Fuel EXE's harmonic pin ring transmission has fewer moving parts and thus fewer noises resulting in a much cleaner and quieter sound signature. From there, let's move towards how we've tuned the bike and looked really hard at the different modes so that they give a great experience on the bike. Yeah, so we really wanted to keep it simple. Uh, three modes, eco, mid, and high. Um, eco is there. It's a great way of going for crazy long rides or riding with your friends that have normal non-electric bikes. Uh, mid is kind of the sweet spot. That's where we kind of expect most people to be spending the majority of their time. Uh, plenty of power, but not overpowered. Uh, high is great for blasting up a climb or keeping up with your buddies on high power bikes. Um, it's impressive how much power the bike has in high. And you can tune all of those modes yourself depending on what my mid might be different than your mid and adjust the characteristics of the bike. So that's gonna be a big part of the customization. Exactly. All, every mode is completely tunable, and that was another big thing we wanted to have from the get-go, so the riders could really make the bike ride the way they wanted to ride. Yeah, we've really worked hard to have a killer app. We'll get into that detail as well today, but uh, you know, the tunability, the features that we wanna also have that link it to the app interface is also really key. Yeah. 
And then what about the geometry? How's that all divided? You're the engineer on the project, right? We talked briefly about some of the high level geometry pieces on the bike. What are, what are the details? You know, uh, because of how small the motor is, the geometry was the easiest part of the bike. We didn't have to compromise the geometry. So it's everything you look for in a modern trail bike. Uh, 440 millimeter chain stay, 65 degree head angle, 77 degree C-tube angle, and a long 485 millimeter reach on the large. So yeah, it, it rides awesome. It rides just like a, a modern trail bike should ride. Yep, the classic, it's longer and slacker and lower and, and everything that that basically we love about a modern trail bike with no compromise. I just, yeah. we just can't emphasize that enough that we're really able to do this without saying, okay, we got to fit this thing in. We basically made the bike we wanted and that's what was really key. It's really the full package for a modern electric trail bike. It's quiet, it's natural, looks like a mountain bike, rides like a mountain bike, all that stuff. Yeah. So another key thing on this bike is we really sweated the details, right? I mean, whether we looked at the motor, the battery, we also looked at the touch points and the interfaces with the actual rider itself. And Ben, you were really instrumental in developing the really cool remote and the display on the top of the top tube. Tell us more about it. Yeah, I mean, just like the rest of the bike, it's about elevating the ride experience and not necessarily the displays and controls. So. Hopefully it all just disappears, um, both visually and physically. On the handlebars, the remote's nice and tucked away right next to your grip. Easy to use, easy to get to if you do need to adjust your mode. And then the display on the top tube is really nice, not having a big computer on there on your bike, just tucking it perfectly into the frame. And it's nice to not have to take a computer and make a mount to adapt to that in there, you can just design both of them together from the ground up, both in the form of it, but also what we're displaying and what sort of happens with the modes. We kept the information pretty minimal with what's on that display. You know, you wanna see how much battery you have, you wanna see exactly how much battery you have, get some really critical range and ride information, obviously see what mode that you're in. Um, that's a big thing to do in just a fraction of a second. When you have that time to look down, you're actually riding, you know, there's a a tree or a turn coming up, you just have to glance down just a little bit to check, and you can only really absorb so much information, so we can't put a whole lot on there. And then we also decided to do walk assist, right? That was yeah. a big discussion because, you know, do we need it or not when you're at this weight of a bike? Yeah, I mean, it's an e-bike, so you can get up a lot of crazy stuff, but there is that one pedal slip that you miss, you know, rider error, it's still up to you to get up there and um, you're trying to start up again, and although the bike is really light, like we've been on some test rides with enduro bikes where that's a 40 pound non-e-bike and you're trying to push it up that hill and it's, it'd be really nice to have walk assist there. So that was a pretty critical part was still keeping that interface clean, but allowing that walk assist to be able to help you up that usually pretty steep grade. Right, it's not an extra button. You know, we kept it really yep. tight and light. I mean, how light is this whole thing? It's 60 grams for the remote and the display. So right. again, yep. simple and light is the theme of the bike. Yeah, yeah. just sweating the details, everything being light. And it's easy to work on too. It's one bolt to pull it out. You can reroute any cables or anything you need. So it's been really nice to be able to, again, design the system around that too, to not have to make compromises or any handlebar adjustments, you can just build the bike the way you normally would. All right, we've been talking a lot about the features and benefits of this TQ system. Why don't we give TQ a chance to talk about themselves and their new HPR50 motor? Hi, I'm Danny Tal. I'm the product manager here at TQ, and today I'm super excited to introduce our new TQ HPR50 e-bike system. Technology which makes it possible for e-bikes to become lighter, quieter, more compact, and seamlessly integrated. Today I will give you a run through of who TQ is and where we come from, our TQ HBR50 e-bike system and what makes it so special and innovative, and how this whole partnership with Trek actually came together. First of all, let me tell you something about TQ. Some of you might know us already, but many of you might not have heard of us yet. So let's change that. We are TQ, the new producer of complete e-bike systems, from drive units to software and apps. Technology which empowers the next generation of e-bikes, such as the new Trek Fuel EXE. TQ stands for Technologie in Qualität, simply translated technology and quality, which is the baseline for everything we do. TQ was founded in 1994 in southern Bavaria, Germany. Over the past almost 30 years, we've grown from a two-man shop 
based in a barn to an international leading tech company with more than 1,700 employees. TQ started with electronic components and embedded systems. That's the main business and where we come from. In the world of e-bikes, we've been since 2008 and we've been striving to revolutionize e-bikes through groundbreaking technology ever since. TQ's heritage in aerospace and robotics and more than 25 years experience in electronics design enabled us to create the best possible combination of innovative technologies seamlessly integrated into next generation e-bikes, which ride, feel and look like analog bikes. Combine that with, with our passion for cycling, which by the way runs through the whole team from production to engineering, we have the perfect mix of tech nerds and bike enthusiasts. The result is, we place the needs of cyclists into the soul of our work. The heart of the system, the HBI50 drive unit, is completely made in Germany, not only developed but also assembled at our site in Inning, where I am right now. The rest of the system, for the most part, is made in Europe to ensure the highest quality standards and short transportation ways. I would summarize it like this. Our team here at TQ takes care of the technology so you can focus completely on the good stuff, like riding. Now you know who TQ is, so let's have a look at the TQ HBR50, our innovative e-bike system. It consists of the HBR50 drive unit moved by our patented harmonic pin ring transmission, which is the heart of the whole system. That, complemented by a 360 watt hour battery, two inch full integrated display, and our minimalistic handlebar remote, and we've created the lightest e-bike system in its category, weighing in just about 3,900 grams. This is the HBR50 drive unit, weighing in at only 1,850 grams. It delivers up to 50 newton meters of torque and up to 300 watts of peak power in a compact, lightweight package. We believe that the principle of less is more doesn't just ring true when it comes to size, weight and noise, but also when it comes to user friendliness. That's why the system features three ride modes, the only three riding modes you really need, which you can fully customize through the app. We provide the technology so you can decide how to ride it. HPR stands for harmonic pin ring. So what is that? And what does it mean for the rider? By using our HPR transmission, we are able to build a light and extremely compact nested motor construction around the bottom bracket. It consists of very few parts, making the motor pretty much invisible. We completely avoid using cog wheels, which cause friction, noise, wear and potential points of failure. The HPR makes it possible to design e-bikes, which sound, look and ride like analog bikes. We also claim that it's light, but how light is light? I already mentioned the HBR50 drive unit itself weighing in only 1,850 grams. In context, that is 30% less than the weight of most common e-bike motors. And it has a Q-factor no more than 135 millimeters wide, which means that the drive unit is a mere 135 millimeters wide, which is the closest anyone could get to the bottom bracket width of analog bikes. Our e-bike system is pretty much silent. So what do we mean with silent? Doesn't everyone claim that? By using an extremely strong electric motor and combining it with a low gearing ratio, we can actually run the electric motor at an RPM three times lower than common e-bike motors. That is what actually makes the drive unit so silent. Lower motor RPM means less noise. The integrated freewheel and drag-free internal components make the Fuel EXE Pedal like an analog bike when the drive unit is disengaged or the e-system is switched off. It's small, or less than half the volume of most conventional e-bike motors. The TQ HBR50 drive unit allows the frame design to work with the system instead of having to work around it. So the suspension and the brakes of the bike can perform without any compromises. In essence, our patented harmonic pin ring transmission allows us to create a natural ride feel, silent system and seamlessly engaging and powerful drive unit that's the quietest and lightest in its class. The e-bike rider's comfort, usability and of course the fun factor in mind, it's cycling but better. Let's move on to the battery. Our battery 
has been specifically developed to power the HBR50 drive unit with maximum efficiency while taking up as little space as possible. Weighing in at only 1830 grams, the battery features a capacity of 360 watt hours, which can be further increased by a 160 watt hour range extender. The mainstream market is going in the opposite direction and adding watt hours to batteries. We, however, have found that our small and efficient drive unit that allows us to use a compact and light battery better matches the needs of the modern rider and still gives you the range you need to fuel all your adventures. You can fully charge the battery within only two hours by using our high-speed charger. You can either plug the charger straight into the charge port on the down tube of the bike or you use the additional charge port on the range extender to daisy chain and charge both batteries successively at once. While riding, the range extender is drained first, so you can get rid of the extra weight once it's empty. The charging process goes the other way around. The integrated battery charges first, so you can leave the empty range extender at home in case you run out of time for charging both. Our display is developed specifically for Trek. It is a frame integrated control hub. It gives you full control over your e-bike, lets you monitor essential system data and connects your e-bike with your mobile phone or favorite and plus bike computer. It is perfectly readable under all light conditions. It gives you all the information you need at one glance. A press of the display button turns the system on and off and lets you navigate through different screens. The smallest part of the HBR50 system is our discrete little handlebar remote. It lets you control your bike support settings without having to move your hand from the grips. It can be mounted on a standard 22.2 mm diameter handlebar and can be conveniently unplugged from its cable. This makes it super easy to change or replace other components on your handlebar. The remote is designed specifically for mountain bikes following our principle of less is more. It is a compact, robust and not in your face piece of technology, made specifically for riders who want to ride more and not worry about anything else. And let's not forget about the Trek Central app. GPS Tuner is a Hungary-based software engineering company and our trusted partner for this project. They developed the app together with Trek and our team here at TQ to make the perfect connection between Fuel EXE the TQ HBR50 system and the rider. So how did Trek and TQ actually meet? Let me tell you a short story. Let's travel back to 2018. Lightweight e-mountain bikes are hardly existent and many manufacturers had not yet realized this segment is going. Trek happened to stumble across a TQ prototype e-mountain bike at Eurobike. We had modified a Trek Powerfly to fit our HBR 120S drive unit. You know, the bike was not really what they were looking for. But the excitement for TQ's harmonic pinring technology was sparked. Immediately, the engineers from the US recognized the potential of the TQ pinring transmission and challenged us with one question. How small can an e-bike motor with HBR technology get? After several brainstorming sessions and a few weeks of development work and testing, our pre-development team presented a concept that was convincing. The partnership between Trek and TQ was born and only grew stronger over the next few years. We bring the innovation and technology. That is what we do and where we excel. Trek brings extensive market knowledge and decades of bike development experience. This combination is the perfect foundation for a strong product and a strong partnership, characterized by trust, competence, openness and a lot of teamwork. And the result is something we are extremely proud of. The TQ HBR50 e-bike system integrated in the new Fuel EXE. In everything we do and for every cyclist that joins us for the ride, we are advanced naturally. We take care of the technology so you can enjoy the ride. In the name of TQ and especially the whole e-bike team, thank you for joining us today and I can't wait to see you all on the trails. All right, let's dive into some more details about the EXE, specifically the range extender. The range extender is a 160 watt hour battery that can extend your rides up to 40%. And we wanted to make it super easy to install. 
so it fits right into the cage that comes with the bike. You can use a normal water bottle cage. We also made the charge port really convenient to work with the range extender. It's positioned high on the down tube of the bike that allows really easy access with a very short cable. Therefore, you have the attachment of the range extender to the access port with a short cable that's protected from things like mud and debris that might normally get onto an access port. And you also have a very short cable so it doesn't loop around to potentially get caught on things like branches and other things when you're riding along. Finally, we put a retention strap in there as well. This allows you to fit any type of water bottle cage. So no matter what you're using, the retention strap will make it work great for you. The second part is the main battery of the bike. We also want to make that easy to remove. So we positioned it so that the battery can come out in front of the motor. That's right, you do not have to remove the motor to get the battery out of the bike. Therefore, if you do want to take the battery out for either travel or for storage, you can do that very easily with our system. It's really convenient and allows the bike to be also very lightweight. All right, so we are talking about an e-bike and what does that mean? We need a great app to interface with that bike. And we are introducing a new Trek app along with this bike but it's not just for this bike. It's the foundation of Trek's digital experience going forward. It's something that allows you to look at the app and see the dashboard, which is really cool because it shows you the current mode, the speed, the ride time, it gives you range estimates, and it even can give you shock and tire pressure recommendations. It can actually give you real shock and tire pressure if equipped with AirWiz. And most importantly is the motor tuning feature. We really wanted you as the rider to be able to tune the three modes on the bike for your type of terrain and your type of riding style. Also range, that's another big one that we get a lot of questions on. You wanna know your range based on the battery in the riding mode and that's provided. Also activity tracking, things like your hours, your calories, the distance and battery usage. And then your ride history can sync with Strava, Komoot and other apps. All right, I quickly hit on the AirWiz feature through the app, but I wanna talk about that in more detail because it's really a feature that we've been working on for quite a while to give a quick snapshot to let you know that your bike is ready to go in, a, in a, what we would call a ready to ride state. And to talk more about that, I have Dave Knopf with me here. He's the senior product manager for full suspension with Trek, key in development of this bike and key in getting this feature available on the bike. Tell us about AirWiz and TireWiz, Dave. Yeah, so we have TireWiz on the wheels and we have AirWiz on your fork and your shock that gives you an easy to see, ready to ride status on the bike as well as through your app, as John mentioned. Uh, the sensors themselves have an LED light that flashes red or green, letting you know that you're good to go on your ride. Uh, you can quickly shake the bike, wake it up and check out those components or you can check directly in your app for a real time readout. And one thing we really like about that, and the reason that we really wanted to push this feature was that we really find that, you know, having the right tire pressure, having your suspension, you know, dialed for your body weight and the train you, you know, settled in on it makes for a much better experience, right? Absolutely. And a lot of people don't want to take the time every time they ride to put a gauge on the tires and on their suspension to check it. We just want to make it quick and easy. You can either look at the bike or look at your app if you want more detail and you know green is go Absolutely. and that you're ready to go. And yep. it's just um, a really cool feature and it's something that's available though on? It's available on the 9.9 models um, and of course it's available through P1 so it allows you flexibility to change it out uh, within that ecosystem. Right, which is really cool because you know some people might want it, some not, but that's what P1's all about, flexibility. Yep. All right, Dave, let's talk about the models. What do we have for the XE? All right, so we have six uh, carbon models. 9.5 is your Dior level spec. We have a Feely X 9.7, which is an SLX XT spec. We have a 9.8 XT, a 9.8 GX Access model, a 9.9 XTR model, and an XX1 Access model. All right, Dave, so we went over the EXE model lineup. You know, but we still look at the high-powered e-bike experience as being very important for a lot of customers out there. And for that, we offer the rail model line. We also look at the FuelEx traditional bike as another option for this customer as well. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for listening to everything. We hope you have a great rest of your day.